He alleged that the U.S. military was secretly studying alien technology out of the Nevada desert, Area 51. That our government has lied about UFO information, that it's withheld UFO files, and even spied on UFO witnesses. In a world where the existence of the Loch Ness Monster is still debated, and the reality of Bigfoot remains a mystery, there's one phenomenon that has caused even more confusion and controversy. Mysterious UFO sightings. These mysterious sightings have stirred up debates and led people to ask, what if aliens really visited us? At the heart of this cosmic conundrum is Bob Lazar, a name that has become synonymous with Area 51 and extraterrestrial technology. In this video, we will reveal the secrets leaked by Bob Lazar that no one was supposed to know. But before we delve into the fantastical tales of secret technology and otherworldly encounters, let's rewind the clock and take a peek into the early years of this infamous figure. Chapter 1. Bob Lazar's Early Years Bob Lazar, a man of mystery, captivated the American public with his astonishing claims. Born on January 26, 1959, Lazar has been at the center of one of the most intriguing and debated stories of our time. His claim to fame? Being hired to work on extraterrestrial technology at a secret site known as S-4, located near the infamous Area 51. Now, before we delve into the juicy details of Lazar's alleged work with alien tech, let's address the elephant in the room his academic background. Considerable fuss has been generated regarding Lazar's educational credentials, or lack thereof. But instead of dwelling on the degrees he may or may not have, let's focus on the schools he actually attended. Lazar's academic journey was, to put it mildly, unremarkable. He graduated from high school in the bottom third of his class, with his only notable foray into the realm of science being a chemistry class. Following high school, he enrolled at Pierce Junior College in Los Angeles, where he continued to fly under the academic radar. Then, in 1982, Lazar found himself working as a technician for a contractor company at the Los Alamos Maison Physics Facility, part of the renowned Los Alamos National Laboratory. But Lazar's story doesn't end there. In addition to his alleged brush with otherworldly technology, he also happens to own and operate United Nuclear Scientific Equipment and Supplies, a business that sells an assortment of materials and chemicals. Quite the eclectic resume, wouldn't you say? Now let's address the big question looming over all of this. Did Bob Lazar really work on alien tech? Or is this just another tall tale spun by a charismatic conspiracy theorist? The answer depends on who you ask. For some, Lazar's assertions about his time at S4 and his interactions with otherworldly technology are nothing more than elaborate fabrications. Skeptics point to inconsistencies in his story and a lack of tangible evidence to support his claims. However, for others, Lazar's testimony represents a tantalizing glimpse into a shadowy world of government secrets and extraterrestrial encounters. The notion of beings from beyond our planet visiting Earth and potentially coexisting with us is undeniably provocative. It challenges our perception of ourselves and our place in the universe. It forces us to ponder the extent of government knowledge and the existence of clandestine operations that operate beyond public scrutiny. Also, the concept of advanced alien civilizations prompts us to question our own significance in the cosmos. Are we truly alone? Or are there beings out there whose technological prowess far surpasses our own? These are the questions that Lazar's claims thrust into the spotlight, igniting debates about the mysteries of space and our place within it. So, what are we to make of Bob Lazar and his revelations? Well, that's a conundrum that continues to confound and captivate us. Whether you believe his accounts or dismiss them as fanciful tales, there's no denying that Lazar has left an indelible mark on the landscape of conspiracy theories and ufology. Chapter 2 the Enigma of Area 51. In 1989, a bombshell of a story exploded onto the scene when Bob Lazar claimed to have worked at a top-secret facility near the infamous Area 51. According to Lazar, this covert location housed not one, not two, but nine extraterrestrial flying saucers. Lazar's interviews with investigative journalist George Knapp complete with his face shrouded in mystery, added an extra dose of intrigue and danger to his already mind-boggling revelations. He wasn't just some attention-seeking wannabe. He genuinely believed that his life was in danger because of the mind-boggling information he possessed. And so, like any good protagonist in a sci-fi thriller, he felt compelled to share his otherworldly revelations with the world. George Knapp's interviews with Lazar were nothing short of sensational. 
But Knapp wasn't content with just serving up a juicy scoop for the masses. He was determined to separate fact from fiction. And so began an exhaustive eight-month investigation. The first order of business? Verifying Lazar's claim of working at the prestigious Los Alamos National Laboratory, renowned for its scientific prowess and pivotal role in the development of the atomic bomb. Initially, officials at Los Alamos denied any record of Lazar's employment, but Knapp wasn't one to be deterred by a mere denial. He delved deeper and finally uncovered something. While some of Lazar's outlandish claims couldn't be neatly tied up with a bow of verification, there were nuggets of truth scattered amidst the intergalactic chaos. For instance, there were former lab employees who stepped forward to vouch for Lazar's stint at Los Alamos. We're talking about people like physicist John Jarmer and an unnamed administrative staff member who corroborated Lazar's tale. And if that's not enough to pique your interest, there are articles and interviews from the 1980s that casually mention Lazar's role as a physicist at Los Alamos. According to Lazar, there's a top secret place called Area 51, which he describes as a treasure chest of stories that mix truth and make believe in really interesting ways. Lazar claims that he worked at a place called S4, which is part of the Area 51 complex. He describes the work there as incredibly complex, blending advanced physics and engineering. But the whole project was shrouded in extreme secrecy. Each team at S4 operated in isolation, unaware of what the others were working on, all to prevent leaks of sensitive information. Now, here's where things start to get really wild. Lazar says that the government was trying to figure out alien spacecraft, how they were made and how they worked. He claims to have been part of a team that looked at nine different spaceships, all with different exteriors but the same design inside. His job? To unlock the secrets of their advanced technology. He even goes as far as to describe one of the flying saucers, which he called the Sport Model as being made out of a metallic substance similar in appearance and touch to liquid titanium. Now, you might be thinking, hold on a minute, this all sounds too far-fetched to be true, and you wouldn't be alone in that thought. When Lazar first made these claims back in 1989, they were met with a lot of skepticism and ridicule. Not only did he claim that this was where the hangars containing reverse-engineered spacecraft were, but also because no such base was known to exist at the time. But here's where things take an unexpected turn. Fast forward to a few years, and independent researchers actually confirmed the existence of a base underneath Papoose Lake. So if Lazar was making it all up about working at Area 51, how did he know about the secret base within another secret base before anyone even knew about the main base? It's a real head-scratcher, isn't it? Chapter 3. The Mysterious Element. 115. Ever since Bob Lazar stepped into the spotlight with his claims of reverse-engineering alien spacecraft, the world has been abuzz with speculation about this elusive element and its supposed role in interstellar travel. According to him, these otherworldly vehicles are powered by Element 115, a substance that allegedly allows them to create anti-gravity envelopes as they navigate through our atmosphere. It's a compelling story, to say the least, and one that has captured the imaginations of both UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. But let's take a step back and approach this with a healthy dose of skepticism, shall we? After all, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, and so far, concrete proof of the existence and properties of Element 115 has been rather elusive. But Lazar's explanation of the anti-gravity envelope is certainly intriguing. According to him, when a UFO enters a planet's atmosphere, it somehow manipulates the very fabric of space-time to create a field that negates the effects of gravity and air resistance. It's a bold claim, to be sure, and one that raises more questions than it answers. For instance, how exactly does this alleged anti-gravity field work? What kind of technology would be required to achieve such a feat? And perhaps most importantly, where is the evidence to support these extraordinary claims? Lazar's assertion that Element 115 is used as fuel for these otherworldly crafts only adds to the mystery. He claims that bombarding this element with protons somehow produces Element 116, also called Livermorium, which in turn decays and produces antimatter. The collision of this antimatter with normal particles supposedly generates a massive energy burst that propels the craft through space. It all sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi novel, doesn't it? But before we start booking our tickets for a joyride on a UFO, powered by Element 115, let's find out if there's any solid evidence. 
At the time Bob Lazar spoke about this, there was no evidence of the element, but now there is evidence of element 115. But when and how did the element come to light? In 2003, Russian scientists managed to synthesize a chemical element with the atomic number 115 and named it Moscovium. But in case you still doubt Lazar, have you ever thought, how did he know about Moscovium 14 years before it was officially discovered? And if that isn't enough to pique your interest, there are recent sightings and videos released by the Pentagon that have shown unidentified craft exhibiting unconventional flight characteristics, eerily similar to what Lazar described. It's enough to make you wonder if there's more truth to his wild tales than we initially thought. Now let's talk about element 115 itself. This is no ordinary element. It's incredibly radioactive and ranks among the heaviest elements ever discovered. To date, only four Muscovium isotopes have been produced in a lab, each existing for a fleeting fraction of a second before vanishing into oblivion. It's like trying to catch a glimpse of a shooting star. Blink and you'll miss it. And as if that wasn't enigmatic enough, scientists haven't been able to produce a stable element 115 isotope that comes anywhere close to what Lazar described. But beyond the tantalizing allure of element 115 lies a deeper mystery the nature of gravity itself. We're still scratching our heads trying to figure out what gravity really is, let alone how to manipulate it for our cosmic adventures. So while you still think there may not be concrete evidence to support all the wild claims surrounding this elusive element, one thing is for certain. The allure of the unknown will always keep us dreaming of the possibilities that lie beyond the stars. Chapter 4. Tangled Web of Education Controversies Lazar boldly claimed that he had earned degrees from prestigious institutions such as the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the California Institute of Technology. Quite the impressive feat, especially considering that he needed this advanced scientific knowledge to allegedly work on reverse engineering alien technology. But as with any good controversy, there's always a catch. When skeptics and journalists decided to do a little digging into Lazar's background, they were met with a wall of silence and dead ends. It's almost as if they stumbled upon the academic equivalent of a Bermuda Triangle. You see, Lazar's supposed master's degrees in physics from MIT and electronics from Caltech? Well, those esteemed universities have no record of him. And to make matters more controversial, scientists Stanton T. Friedman and Donald R. Prothero boldly stated that someone with Lazar's high school performance wouldn't stand a chance of being accepted by either institution. Also, Lazar wasn't able to conjure up the names of any lecturers or fellow students from his alleged stints at MIT and Caltech. It's almost as if his time at these institutions was shrouded in a veil of mystery. And as for one supposed Caltech professor named William Duxler, Turns out he was comfortably situated at Pierce Junior College and had never set foot in Caltech. When pressed for an explanation, Lazar whipped out the ultimate conspiracy. According to him, the U.S. government was pulling all the strings to keep their top-secret projects under wraps. And if anyone dared to spill the beans, well, their academic and professional histories would be promptly erased or altered faster than you can say, cover-up. Lazar went on to suggest that the government had wiped his academic records clean to make him appear unreliable and to ensure that no one took him seriously. Now, the debate over Lazar's educational background isn't just about academic integrity. It's a crucial piece of the puzzle that shapes how we view his entire story. On one hand, the lack of evidence could raise some serious doubts about his claims of tinkering with alien technology. But on the flip side, if Lazar's wild tale of government meddling holds any water, it adds a whole new layer of intrigue to the narrative. We're talking about truths so earth-shattering that they warrant a full-blown cover-up operation. Chapter 5. The FBI Raid Fiasco Bob Lazar, a man whose name has become synonymous with conspiracy theories and government cover-ups, found himself at the center of yet another media frenzy when his house was raided by the FBI. This dramatic event unfolded during the filming of a Netflix documentary about Lazar and his extraordinary claims, adding another layer of intrigue to an already enigmatic story. As the documentary crew packed up their cameras and bid farewell to Lazar, little did they know that the real action was just about to begin. According to Lazar and the documentary director Jeremy Corbell, a team of FBI agents stormed Lazar's humble abode shortly after the crew's departure. 
The ostensible reason for this dramatic raid? The FBI claimed they were searching for receipts related to a certain individual who allegedly procured toxic materials from Lazar's company. However, as Lazar himself pointed out in an interview with Larry King, the sheer number of agents and experts who swarmed his property seemed excessive for a simple paperwork retrieval mission. They came with more people than you would think could even fit in our building, Lazar said. It was as if the FBI had mistaken his modest home for a high-security government facility, complete with its own arsenal of top-secret documents and clandestine experiments. This begs the question, why would the FBI mobilize such a formidable force to retrieve a few pieces of paper? Could it be that there's more to Lazar's story? Or perhaps the government agencies involved simply have a penchant for grandiose displays of authority? Of course, skeptics have long cast doubt on Lazar's extraordinary assertions, dismissing them as nothing more than elaborate fabrications designed to capture public attention. If this were indeed the case, one might wonder why the FBI, CIA, Homeland Security, and the NSA felt compelled to orchestrate such a dramatic display of force. After all, if Lazar's claims were merely the product of an overactive imagination, wouldn't a simple visit from a couple of agents suffice? Whether Bob Lazar's claims ultimately proved to be fact or fiction, one thing is certain. The saga of the FBI raid on his home has added yet another layer of intrigue to an already captivating tale. And as we ponder the motivations behind this larger-than-life spectacle, one can't help but wonder, what other surprises await us in the ever-unfolding mystery of Bob Lazar? Chapter 6. The 2018 Documentary In 2018, the UFO community was set abuzz by a documentary that brought back into focus the controversial claims of Bob Lazar. This documentary, masterfully crafted by filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, not only reignited interest in Lazar's assertions, but also catapulted him into the spotlight once again. Thanks to this film, Lazar found himself gracing the stage of the Joe Rogan Podcast, a platform that boasts a global audience and a penchant for probing discussions. Corbell, the mastermind behind the documentary, has also been making waves in the media circuit, with multiple appearances on network news talk shows. His work has even led to the leaking of a UAP video depicting enigmatic triangular shapes traversing the skies. It seems that Corbell has become the go-to guy for all things otherworldly, and his influence is undeniable. Now, before this documentary, the existence of a secret military base. The infamous Area 51 was shrouded in mystery and conspiracy theories. The U.S. government finally came clean about its existence, lending a newfound credibility to Lazar's narratives. But let's not forget the crux of Lazar's story, extraterrestrial spacecraft and advanced alien technology. If these elusive beings were to make a grand entrance in their intergalactic vessels and declare their prior visits to Earth, Lazar would undoubtedly be the first to say, I told you so. The vindication would be sweet for this enigmatic figure who has weathered skepticism for decades. Ever since Lazar first divulged his experiences at S4 and Area 51 in 1989, he has been reticent to delve into the details of what he witnessed. However, Corbell's film broke this silence, providing a platform for Lazar to share his beliefs about extraterrestrial technology on Earth, a rare occurrence indeed. One of the most intriguing aspects of Lazar's accounts is his mention of a biometric identification system at S4 that could scan employees' hand bones. In a fascinating twist, Corbell unearthed a declassified image resembling Lazar's description, prompting him to acknowledge that this was the first time he had seen such a device since his time at the base. It's these peculiar details that add layers of intrigue to Lazar's already captivating narrative. But Lazar's claims about the use of Element 115, also known as Muscovium, for the propulsion system of extraterrestrial craft are equally enthralling. It's as if he's handed us a glimpse into a science fiction novel come to life. And with Corbell at the helm, weaving together interviews and captivating visuals, the result is an enthralling portrayal of one of the most infamous UFO truthers in the world. In the opening scenes of the documentary, we find Corbell in a dramatic situation, huddled in a neon-lit bathroom, anxiously poring over a series of text messages about Lazar being raided by the feds. It's the kind of high-stakes moment that sets the stage for the wild ride that follows. The climax of the film reveals their theory about the raid. It's all about trying to get their hands on the supposed alien energy source, Element 115. And since Corbell's documentary hit the screens, 
Lazar's supporters have gone into full-on battle mode over the accusation that the FBI improperly raided United Nuclear to recover Element 115. Even the Daily Beast is asking, why did the FBI raid the home of the biggest alien truther? It's the kind of headline that makes you do a double take. Lazar and Corbell are not holding back, publicly stating that Lazar's company was raided as part of a sustained surveillance campaign against a man who's been dubbed a reluctant UFO messiah. It's like something straight out of a Marvel comic, but with more conspiracy theories and fewer capes. In an interview with Larry King, Corbell and Lazar claimed that during the search, FBI agents were able to repeat back verbatim a portion of their previous day's private conversation. And if that wasn't enough drama, at the annual UFO festival in McMinnville, Oregon, Lazar tells a captivated crowd that the FBI played an audio recording of his and Corbell's Element 115 discussion. According to the MSP reports, police had already obtained search warrants a day prior to Corbell and Lazar's conversation. So what's the truth behind this real-life sci-fi saga? Is it a case of government conspiracy or just a wild goose chase? Let's know what you think in the comments section. Chapter 7. Cinematic Extraterrestrial Examples when it comes to movies about extraterrestrial encounters, there's no shortage of awe-inspiring spacecraft that leave us pondering the mysteries of the universe. Take, for instance, the enigmatic vessels in Arrival. These quiet, hovering ships defy the laws of physics as we know them, shrouded in an air of mystery as they beckon us to contemplate the boundless potential of uncharted space. Their otherworldly technology and ethereal presence serve as a thought-provoking reminder of our place in the cosmos. Then there's the awe-inspiring mothership in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a colossal floating city adorned with mesmerizing lights that speak to us in a language all their own. Its intricate design hints at a home for countless life forms, sparking our imaginations and prompting us to ponder the grand adventure of interstellar travel. But it's not just on the silver screen that we encounter tales of extraterrestrial craft. Reports of sightings from real-life individuals add an exhilarating layer to the ongoing saga of unidentified flying objects. From the iconic flying saucer to pancake-shaped vessels with peculiar antennas, these accounts fuel our fascination with the unknown and challenge our perceptions of what lies beyond our own planet. And let's not overlook the captivating accounts of elongated, cigar-shaped ships housing smaller exploratory vessels, visions that evoke the image of cosmic motherships venturing into our solar system. Add to that the sightings of luminous disks streaking through the sky at incomprehensible speeds, their kaleidoscopic glow leaving us spellbound. And then there are the peculiar shapes, pyramids, diamonds, and otherworldly structures that defy earthly comparison, each one a tantalizing glimpse into the realm of the extraordinary. Whether born from the creative minds of filmmakers or recounted by those who gaze skyward and glimpse more than distant stars, these tales ignite within us a thrilling sense of curiosity. They beckon us to ponder our place in the grand tapestry of space and inspire us to dream of what lies beyond. Chapter 8. The Truth in the age-old debate of whether we are alone in the universe, recent events have added fuel to the fire of speculation. It seems that the truth may be out there, or at least some tantalizing hints of it. Let's take a closer look at the recent developments that have everyone talking. First off, we have the US Navy confirming the existence of videos showing unidentified flying objects with capabilities beyond our understanding. These videos have sparked speculation that the government might just know a thing or two about advanced tech, similar to what the infamous Lazar described. Also, some government and military members have been pushing for more openness about UFOs. It's like they've suddenly realized that keeping secrets about extraterrestrial visitations isn't doing anyone any favors. In 2020, classified UFO footage was even released, igniting a wildfire of public debate. It's like the whole world suddenly woke up and realized that there might be something more to this universe. Now, we're not saying that these actions prove Lazar's claims beyond a shadow of a doubt, but they sure do keep his story relevant, don't they? Whether you're a die-hard believer in Lazar's tales or a skeptic, you can't deny that the ongoing discussion about advanced aerial technologies is one heck of a ride. And speaking of skeptics, doubts seem to be growing as we dive deeper into the debate over Lazar's truth. It's like a game of he said, she said, except in this case it's more like he claimed they confirmed, but do we really believe it? 
Let's talk about David Grush and his bold claims about the U.S. military finding vehicles and remains that don't come from planet Earth. These claims, coupled with a growing public curiosity and official government meetings to discuss UFOs, have sparked new conversations about whether the government is finally spilling the extraterrestrial beans. Also, there were reports about pesky sightings at Chicago O'Hare International Airport in 2006, and reports from Navy pilots about strange flying objects. But the explanations given by authorities just aren't cutting it for many people. It's like trying to explain away a magic trick with it's just sleight of hand, when deep down, you know there's something more going on. This pattern of sightings, denials, and the occasional whistleblower speaking up keeps people both fascinated and doubtful about the possibility of otherworldly life and technology on our beloved planet Earth. Chapter 9. Remorseful Revelations Regrets. We all have them, don't we? Whether it's that ill-advised haircut from the 80s or the decision to come forward with information about extraterrestrial spacecraft, regrets have a way of sneaking up on us. And no one knows this better than Bob Lazar. When Corbell met with Lazar in sunny California, the man had a case to make. He insisted that he had no ulterior motives for lying about his work in the mid-80s. In fact, Lazar claimed that coming forward with his story had changed his life for the worse. You see, ever since Lazar spilled the extraterrestrial beans about his time at S4 in 1989, he's been less than eager to chat about what he claims to have seen at Area 51. It seems that the burden of carrying such otherworldly secrets can weigh heavily on a man. Chapter 10. Where is Bob Lazar now? So where is Bob Lazar now, you ask? Well, let's just say he's been keeping himself busy. Back when he was interviewed by KLAS, he was just a humble self-employed film processor. These days, Lazar is the proud owner and operator of United Nuclear Scientific Equipment and Supplies, a company nestled in Langsburg, Michigan. Their product lineup includes everything from radioactive ores to radiation sensors to a smorgasbord of lab chemicals. Lazar has come a long way since his film processing days. But it hasn't all been smooth sailing for our extraterrestrial enthusiast. In 2006, he found himself in hot water for violating the Federal Hazardous Substances Act. And just when you thought things couldn't get any more exciting, he was also charged in 2007 for the illegal sale of chemicals and components used in the manufacturing of illegal fireworks. But in addition to running his company and making headlines with his legal escapades, Lazar also co-hosts an annual festival for pyrotechnics enthusiasts. The festival, known as Desert Blast, is a veritable explosion of homemade explosives, rockets, and other pyrotechnic delights. It's like a science fair on steroids, and that's not all. Our man Lazar also makes appearances at UFO Fest, where he regales audiences with tales of his claimed experiences and other related subjects. It's safe to say that he's become quite the fixture in the world of ufologists. So, back to the question everyone is asking. Is Bob Lazar spinning a web of lies, or is he privy to a truth so mind-bogglingly dangerous that it defies belief? Well, the jury's still out on that one, but one thing's for sure. Bob Lazar has certainly made a name for himself in the world of the unexplained. Do you also believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial life and technology? Let's know in the comments section. Thanks for watching. For a more thrilling story, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen.